Hi Miles, thanks for the further footage. Um, I thought I'd start with this um, comparison at P4 between yourself and Charlie and just look at some key aspects. Things are starting to calm down in regards to the sort of rotation of the head, the angle of the eyes, etc. As we discussed in your last session. So that's really, it's calming down. It's still a little bit more than I would want. And I'm sure that when you're doing a drill with the eye closed, that that calms down uh, even further. If we look at what's sort of what's causing that or what's helping to certainly make improving the P4 more difficult, I think we've got to consider first of all what's happening to achieve this sort of this look with the head. And I'm seeing a number of things, the differences between yourself and Charlie, really what I'm trying to point out here at the moment. We're going to use this image of Charlie as your model uh, for the foreseeable future. We've got a left arm uh, with Charlie that's travelled to approximately here. It was with yourself, the left arm's been taken too far back. Largely due to a substantial difference in the amount of shoulder travel. Which is facilitated by a much greater hip turn. Um, difficult to put a line on here you can almost you can tell that the hips are turned more um, but really if we can if we concentrate on what the knee's doing the, the left knee is working inwards much more than Charlie's um, I've not got a problem with the left knee moving in the left knee moving in uh, is a contributing factor in the hip is created by or is caused by the hip turn and the hip turn is a massive, obviously, contributing factor into generating some, to some shoulder turn. But as we can see, our shoulder turn's a little bit excessive. Our hip turn is a little bit excessive. And that's shown itself in how much that left knee is working in. And also how much this trail leg is straightening. And obviously, you know, within our network, we're talking about the right knee or the trail knee should extend, which is true. But it can also extend too much and at too high a rate for the club that we're using. To give you an idea of that, if we look at Charlie from at setup, Charlie, Charlie will have approximately 25 degrees of flex in that trail leg. From P1 to P2, he should lose about 7 degrees. P2 to P3, should lose a further 7 degrees. And then P3 to P4 would lose another 7 degrees, so he's going to go from 25 to about 4 degrees of flex in that trail leg, so whilst it is extending, it doesn't necessarily need to straighten as much, now if you look at someone like Troy, I'm just going to get Troy swing up for you, uh, just do this quickly Troy has less uh, range of movement than Charlie and as a result just going to try and find him here with an iron and as a result, to get the butt of the club to travel as far as he needs to, he's going to straighten the right leg more. He's going to turn the hips more. The left knee is going to come in more. But you can see there that's created a very similar shoulder travel here to what we're seeing with Charlie and a very similar left arm condition to what we saw with Charlie. So the turning aspect, which is created by the trail leg straightening and the lead leg flexing, is being done a little bit too much with yourself. I'm going to get Charlie back up now as our model. Take him back to P4. So I'm looking at your P4 and his P4 at the moment. I'm just saying we just need to calm down the amount that we turn. We have calmed down a little bit. But we need to calm down a little bit further. You're understanding the mechanics of it uh, much better than you did. However, there's still something that's causing us problems. I'm just going to take you back to P1 briefly. Uh, one change, one little change I would make there, I would flex the lead leg a little bit more. So I feel like the weight's a little bit further forward. I feel like you're going to flex the lead leg a little bit more. Put the weight forward by flexing the lead knee just a little bit more at set up that position the centers a little bit further forward and allow you to get a little bit more compression on it you mentioned in your, in your uh, email or your tweet that you were suffering with the thin a little bit so a little bit more flex in the lead leg if we take Charlie back to P4 again 
and then watch yourself as you take this club back and this is the overriding issue for me at the moment the rate at which you go back so the pace at which you go back the tempo if you will is very hard to control um, <laughs> you've got more speed going back than a lot of pupils I teach have got coming down a uh, hell of a lot of speed on the way back and it's just hard to control things when you're doing that. I want to see a little bit more discipline introduced into that takeaway. A little bit more thought given to the tempo at which you swing. And the way I want you to develop that is to start to hit some shots where you take the club back and stop. Hold it for a count of three and then swing down and through. So again, you're going to set up a little bit more flex in the lead leg, swing to the top, stop and hold it, count of three, swing down and hit. Now, the reason I want you to do that as one drill is because in order for you to go back and stop, there's just no way you're going to be able to do it at this speed. I mean, at this speed, you can see there's almost like a recoiling effect as we get to the top. So that sort of that move to the top is going to have to calm down. It's going to have to slow down a little bit. This will see the shoulders travel a little bit less, the left arm travel a little bit less. Subsequently, the shaft of the club won't get past parallel, and you should start to see a little change in the, the amount that the trail leg straightens and the amount that the left knee works in. So you should start to see a move towards what we're seeing with Charlie. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, hit some shots, swing to the top, stopping, holding that position so that you've got to be a little bit more controlled in order to hold the position you arrive at at P4 without bouncing around. You'll notice initially it'll be quite difficult to do. Hold it for a count of three, very, very important. Uh, you hold it for three, you've got to sequence your moves uh, much better in the downswing to hit anything resembling a good goal shot. It's not a terribly easy drill to do at first. It's not a ball striking drill as such initially, um, but it is something that given time, you'll start to see an improvement with your overall striking. If I just take you back a couple of frames here, look how much more control that is, look how much less than the lead knee has kinked in, look how much more under control the arms are, a little bit less twisting of the head. So that's one way of doing it. I want you to continue your work that you've been doing on working with the eye closed, doing that drill. Uh, I also want you to continue your work with the cane against the knee. Uh, looking at it from down the line, things are improving uh, a great deal, certainly in regards to the leg action. Uh, the right knee doesn't flex forward anywhere near as much as it did. Getting on here. Posture's good. A lot of good things in the backswing. It's just a little bit too aggressive. I want to see that backswing made more passive. Uh, another way you can do that is try to make your backswing last three seconds. So hit some shots where you're going to take three seconds to arrive at P4. So that's really going to slow you down. And then start down and hit the shots. Don't react to where the ball's going too much. It's all about disciplining that backswing. So I want to see a more disciplined backswing rather than a club that's just taken back aggressively um, without very little, without without very much control. Uh, a lot of lines in your swing are starting to come on. The right knee, like I say, is not flexing forward anywhere near as much as it did. The work that you're doing with the cane is paying dividends. The move through the ball is much more passive. There are things in there that I would like to see um, tidied up. However, my experiences are such that doing the drill where you're stopping at the top, holding it for a count of three, hitting the golf ball, um, things start to tidy up quite quickly and sometimes quite dramatically in the downswing in order to go from a standing start you've got to sequence the swing in a more efficient manner 
and therefore you start, your body and your mind will start to achieve some of the things that you've been maybe looking to achieve, um, just as a matter of course, just satisfying um, or in an attempt to satisfy something resembling a decent ball strike. So plenty of work on the drills, keep working with the last two that we did on, this, on the previous session um, and add these two. I, I really want to see some more discipline with that backswing, I can't stress that enough. Um, keep working on that, keep slowing it down, take longer to get to the top, be more disciplined with the backswing, and then you can pour on as much speed as you want in the downswing. Going from a static start at the top or a static position at P4, very, very good for your sequencing. Uh, you might find it quite difficult to hit the ball initially, keep plugging away, you'll get the um, one tournament player I deal with, he actually hits it so good doing that drill that he wishes he had the bottle to use it in a tournament. Uh, fortunately, he doesn't. He still hits it quite nicely, but he says when he gets going with that drill, he's never hit it as good in his life. And he's a guy who's playing on the European Tour, so you know he's hit a lot of good goal shots in his time. So plenty of work on that drill. Make the backswing take longer. So we're using the element of time. Count to three. Make it take three seconds to get to P4. It's a much more deliberate with the backswing good luck with it I look forward to getting some more footage off you um, over the next week or so if you could send me some footage of you doing the two drills that would be great so actual footage of you doing the drill so I can make some sort of or draw some sort of comparison for you uh, and send it across via email good luck with it have a great 2016